Hi, Rish. Nice to meet you. Nice maybe, to meet you, too. Maybe for these guys, we could start off by sort of telling the guys who we are. So would you like to dive in and go first? Sure. Uh, it's great to be here. Uh, uh, back at South Summit, I was here uh, five years ago. I used to live in Madrid when I was 21. Um, so definitely, you know, soy madrileño. I love Madrid. Um, I am so happy to be back. I think I'll be living here next year. But my background has taken me from management consulting, investment banking on Wall Street. I was at UBS and HSBC in real estate investment banking of all places. So come from the traditional finance, real estate world. Got into venture capital a number of years ago, and it took me from venture capital early stage. I was at a company called TopTal. Uh, first biz dev there, Top Tal's a talent marketplace backed by Andreessen Horowitz. And then previously to Superworld, I started Rogue Initiative Studios, which is a film, television, gaming, and virtual reality studio in Hollywood. My co-founder produced Call of Duty, the game, Modern Warfare series, and Ghosts. And my partner there is Michael Bay, the action director, who's known for Transformers, The Island, Armageddon, Pearl Harbor. We build cross-platform franchises at Rogue Initiative, and that's what got us to the idea of Superworld. Um, I reunited with another co-founder of mine. We saw what Pokemon Go did in the real world, and we thought, you know what? How can we empower anyone to create, discover, and monetize anything anywhere, and then utilize Web3 to own the world? So I'm excited to be here today, and, and thanks for the opportunity to tell our story. Wow, that's really cool. Uh, so I don't think I can compete with that, Harish, but my background is really, I'm, for, I'm an engineer, so my background is electrical electronic engineering and computer science. Uh, the, my, my kind of uh, uh, go-to was designing machinery for pharmaceutical oil and gas. Uh, I did some stuff for NASA, uh, which was super cool. Uh, but I've been in the physical world, so now I, I work for Ferroviol, a, a large multinational uh, corporation, multi-billion euro corporation. I get to travel the world and I get to play with concrete and bridges and, and these kind of things. So um, it's really great to be here. Uh, as you can tell from my accent, I'm from the north of UK, but I spend a lot of time in Madrid too. I too love Madrid and I, I'm very lucky to have a, a, a team based here that's working in the metaverse. So uh, it sounds a bit strange. I'm not really sure why we're on the stage together. No, we've got a, a, you Call of Duty in gaming and me sort of concrete and infrastructure. It doesn't really make any sense. So, Maybe you can explain a little bit about Superworld, you know? How can we find the connection here? Yeah, I think there, we got to figure out what the connection is and, and potentially how, you know, the physical world and the virtual world and how these things come together. So I'll, I'll go ahead and kind of talk to you all about what Superworld is, how to think about it, what, what the vision of what we're creating is, and we'll try to see if we can find those similarities. Um, I use a three-pronged analogy to explain what Superworld is. The first prong is Pokemon Go. So if I come to Madrid, London, Paris, New York, Tokyo, anywhere in the world, you could say, Rish, why don't you check out my world? And I could walk around and you've left me things. You've left a hologram of yourself somewhere. I can talk to you. You can take me on a tour of your construction sites. You've left photos and videos around the world, allowing me to visualize things that you've seen, done, things that you want me to learn about. You've left messages at your favorite restaurants about what I should eat and drink. You've left digital assets all over the world for me to click on, activate, buy, discover. So you've personalized the real world in augmented reality, with any type of content, virtual reality, augmented reality, WebGL, the content doesn't matter. The whole point is you have a video game. The whole world is your video game. You can do anything you want. So can I, so can brands. There's an infinite number of filters on the world. So that's the first kind of analogy of Super Bowl. Interesting, so maybe I am seeing a connection here. Uh, so we're launching Infraverse, uh, Infraverse, Metaverse, and Infrastructure again. So, but looking at the augmented reality piece, what we need to be able to do to drive safety, to connect our people to our infrastructure, to be able to monitor our construction sites, we need digital content overlaid on the real world. We need to be able to monitor site progress. We need to look at when we're building a, a bridge or a building and make sure we can overlay the, the, the digital design on that real world, make sure it's aligned, make sure it's up to speed. And we need to be able to give access to our teams in a very safe way, access to that material. So rather than putting them in dangerous situations on a construction site, 
I can put them in the metaverse. They, they may not be chasing Pokemon, but they are able to experience working at height. They're able to experience how to construct the thing uh, before we ever actually have to touch the real world. So yeah, maybe, maybe I'm starting to see the first connection. So what's the second point? Yeah, and again, I love all those examples. And I think the way we think about that first analogy is it can be anything you want, consumer all the way to enterprise. So I think there's a lot of things that we could do together to allow companies to personalize the world. The second analogy is a data analogy. I use the, the analogy of Foursquare, which is a well-known kind of data company. Um, and, you know, there's a concept called play to earn that you might have heard about, which is you play a video game and you earn crypto. But what if you could create live to earn? And that's what we're doing. How can you use tokenomics to incentivize everyone to be able to do the things that they love? Whether it's come to South Summit, go to Ibiza for the weekend, you know, do things in your community to help improve the lives of people around you, to go on a run. You know, how can I get Nike to help pay for you to go on a run? You know? So the idea is, can we use tokenomics and bring those into our real lives so that we could do things we're passionate about, right? The other part of it is, um, there was a documentary that really impacted me called Social Dilemma. It was on Netflix. And it's all about how we're in these algorithmic bubbles. Everyone's in these different bubbles. It's about how we're staring at our phones all day. Like, even if we don't know it, I mean, you can't lose your phone, otherwise you're like, in serious trouble, you know? Or it's about how kids are obsessed with making Instagram and TikTok posts. And I think the second analogy that's really important to us is how can we, instead of creating a life-sucking or life-escaping platform, we don't want to do that, okay? Let's build a platform that actually enhances your real life. How can we build a platform that enhances your real life? I call that live to earn. And then additionally, how can we build a platform that improves the real world? So every time someone buys real estate in Superworld, we plant trees in the real world. We're partnered with the World Bank in the Caribbean. We're partnered with the United Nations and UNESCO to help rebuild cities. In fact, a month ago, we brought together two tribes in the Amazon jungle to create digital art in the Amazon to help people understand reforestation. So the big mission here in our second data analogy is improve people's real lives and build a better world. Again, I think I can see another connection. So from a proverbial perspective, obviously our, our main focus is building the real world. So actually building uh, the infrastructure, but there is a value chain there. So we have an old eco ecosystem of partner supply chain clients, and obviously we have the very important end user that needs to use our infrastructure in a safe way. And I, I'm fascinated by the idea of tokenizing that value stream and how when during the early design phases we can start to recognize value that maybe pays back during operational maintenance phases. How we can start to digitalize our asset in a way that we can offer new digital services to a wider audience, so uh, to 5G uh, operators, how we can deliver new digital services to people on the road. So maybe, again, I really like the concept of, you know, autonomous vehicle, we're driving down the highway, but I've got digital content. Maybe my kids are in the back looking with their iPads out the window and seeing dinosaurs on the side of the road. And this is really improving the experience while at the same time ensuring we're monitoring that vehicle and we're making sure that there's a very, very safe experience for those end users. So I think there's a, that tokenizing piece is really, really, really key. And uh, I think there's a, another, another connection there. So again, now I'm starting to get really, really uh, curious about uh, what's your third, third point. Yeah, and you know, I think, um, I, I think all those examples are, are really um, ways that we can, you know, again, utilize data to bring customers, bring companies like yours, uh, building out infrastructure in the physical world, and aligning those interests, right? Where, you know, when you're talking about rebuilding a city, there's so many stakeholders there. And if you can make sure that all of those stakeholders are really aligned in that process and utilize data to do that, um, to help people understand their environments, um, I think it's a very powerful combination. Um, you can really impact and activate and mobilize you know, huge projects around the world because you have 
you know, the support of the, 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 the governments and the people around where those projects and why those projects are being built. So, um, but the third analogy is monopoly. Uh, so we've, we've taken the surface of the earth and we've divided it into 64 billion properties. Each property covers a city block of land. So you could buy Puerto del Sol, Plaza Mayor, your favorite beach in Malaga, Times Square, you know, your favorite spots in Tokyo, you name it. You can buy anywhere in the world. The whole world is available. Why do you want to buy the world? Because when you buy virtual real estate, you get it for 0.1 ether, which is about $200 right now. You get a city block of land anywhere in the world. And once you buy that land, you become a stakeholder there. That's your property on the blockchain. And you get a share of all of the benefits and monetization that happens there. Digital commerce, e-commerce, advertising, gaming, data, analytics, decentralized finance, anything that results in monetization. And you are able to create, discover, and monetize content in those locations. So if you have places in the world that you love, you can own those places in Superworld and help to start creating value in those places. And so the important thing there on the real estate side of it is we all build Superworld together. That's the beauty of it, is if you understand this mission, when you buy real estate, you join te what I call Team Superworld, and then we build together. And corporations are a part of that too. They come on board and buy their projects, they buy their you know, real estate in the physical world, but they buy it in Superworld on that virtual overlay. I really like that concept yeah. of uh, Team Superworld. And I think from a, from a construction and from an infrastructure perspective, the whole piece about having a team, the, the ecosystem. So it's maybe a little bit boring, it's not a super sexy Pokemon, et cetera, et cetera, but having this common data standard, having these models whereby we're able to develop this infrastructure in a virtual space, knowing that when we deliver that, that the digital footprint is then compatible with a, with a DOT, with a government agency, it's compatible with OEMs of automotive vehicles, et cetera, being able to simulate those sensors, those data protocols, and the connectivity of those systems, is absolutely fundamental to how we need to drive infrastructure uh, forward in the future. So again, I, I think you're very lucky, you know? $200 for an acre of land, I don't think Ferrovial's been able to do that within the last 100 years. <laughs> um, but I, and I think the time frames to build a digital world and, and start it from scratch, I think this is, is really cool. But infrastructure needs to catch up, and we're still dealing with the legacy. We, so we have to be able to promote, and we need to bring the ecosystem on board, we need to train, and that for us is why infra, uh, Infraverse is so important now, that we need to really, really start pushing this message, and we need the ecosystem of partners, we need the startups, and we need all of that help from guys like you. And I started this conversation thinking we had nothing in common, and now I'm thinking <laughs> maybe I should be launching Superworld and you can launch Infraverse, because we're pretty much doing the same thing. Yeah. But, I mean, that, that all sounds great, but let's, let's also talk about maybe some of the challenges. So, sure. I think we all know with Metaverse, you know, the concern about digital identity, identity theft, deep fake, uh, the GDPR, these kind of challenges. So, what are you doing to address those kind of things in Superworld? Yeah, and those are very important uh, challenges, and, and so I'm glad you're, you're bringing that up, and I think you're exactly right that there's more similarities uh, by far than there are differences in what we're doing. I mean, on our side, it's very expansive. It really can you know, accommodate anything you can imagine, which, again, you are building you know, to the limits of, of one's imagination in the physical world. And so that's very inspiring. And that's what we're all about, is enabling people to do that. I think the challenges of, you know, enabling all of us to have a world and have our own filter on the world and an infinite number of filters on the world, again, goes back to one of the challenges is on the data side, I think you brought up. You know, we believe in permission use of data, data integrity, data sovereignty. What I want you to be able to do is own your data, own your world, and be able to monetize from that data, right? And ultimately, what that means is, is you are 
the stakeholder in the world that you're creating, and you're able to leverage that in different ways. Um, I think that ultimately, as we all come together to build this world, I think governance is also very important. You know, who makes decisions here, who runs the world, and a lot of that we're doing in a very decentralized fashion, and we're progressively decentralizing Superworld. And I think ultimately, we all, as a society, as one world, I think the biggest challenge is how can we use this technology, as I said, to actually improve our real life? You know, can we stop wars from happening, right? Which is very important. Can we educate people? Can we, you know, so the challenges. I think are real world oriented and we're using these, these, these technologies to solve those things and do that in a way that's very responsible and, you know, again, uh, takes in all of our stakeholders into account. I think uh, it's really good to hear and I think at the moment uh, I, you talk about super world, I think we need to talk about infraverses, the plural. Uh, at the moment we need separate infraverses that are compatible and we need to be able to secure those. I think. Technologies like blockchain, distributed ledger, these things are going to be really, really important in terms of monitoring that security. Um, and this is something that I think has to be at the forefront of the thinking. And I think as Web 3.0 matures and, and these kind of uh, trends, it's going to be absolutely fundamental to the growth um, of these kind of uh, opportunities in the, in the metaverse. Uh, and I think for me, uh, the next thing to think about, okay, if we've protected the individual, we've protected our clients, okay, but if I now, if I build a bridge in, uh, in, my, in my infraverse and I publish this into your super world, uh, what's to stop my competition coming and taking this bridge and copying it 500 times in the world and maybe even in the real world? So how are we protecting corporates? How are we protecting yeah. the corporate interest in the, in the metaspace? Yeah, you know, I think that's a, a, a very important question as you consider, you know, like we are doing, uh, building a platform that ultimately is you know, across consumer to enterprise. Um, you know, we are employing many of the best practices. Uh, and again, um, we have, you know, many of the top people in the space uh, on the enterprise side. Uh, Nathan Gower, who uh, built the digital assets group at uh, IBM, is one of our investors and advisors. We have people like Stephen Wolfram on board, who's one of the top AI computer scientists in the world. Uh, you know, again, um, our idea is we're not necessarily reinventing the wheel here. Um, we're taking the best practices on the security side, on the infrastructure side, on the data side, um, uh, and again, working very closely with corporate partners and determining what are the best ways to optimize you know, the goals of enterprise partners that, you know, again, want security, want the ability to, again, have safety for their customers, safety for their projects in terms of, you know, what's happening in the real world, but also be able to do that in a very optimized fashion in the metaverse. Again, I think uh, yeah. you've hit the nail on the head yeah. here. The right, the right partners with the right approach. And from your yeah. perspective, strategic partnership with Microsoft, we're working with Unity, Unreal, NVIDIA, and, yeah. and we're really pushing to make sure that from a security perspective, this is being uh, maintained and monitored. And people like Autodesk and Bentley, as they mature into this space, uh, I think uh, those are the, the guys we need to be playing with. But I think what's also really important, it's not all about the big brands and the big names, it's about the startups as well. It's about making sure that we give the opportunities. And what I'd like to just uh, very quickly invite you all to do, uh, the Infraverse, there is a, a yellow cube just as you leave on the left-hand side. Please come and visit and see some of the use cases. And we'd love feedback from you guys and the ideas and thoughts and anything you can do to offer to help us to accelerate the journey to the Metaverse is going to be uh, really, really cool. And on that note, the final thing, scalability. So for us, this is a key challenge. The, yeah. So in terms of super world, where is this going? How quickly are you going to be able to scale? Well, you know, I think the beauty of super world is that we all build it together. And one of the things that we've noticed is that when someone understands what we're doing, understands the long-term mission of what we're doing, they come on board, they buy real estate, and they start building. So I'd love to build with all of you. Thank what an you. invitation to finish our big round of applause. A fantastic panel.